logical fallacies are some of the more entertaining, more fun aspects of uh, rhetorical analysis. So I wanted to go through a few of the major ones and uh, study them just a little bit, and here we go. So ad hominem is this first one here. It is attacking a person's character or their personal traits rather than uh, addressing the argument itself. Um, my example here is that uh, after Sally presents an eloquent and compelling case for a more equitable tax taxation system, her opponent, Sam, asked the audience whether we should believe anything from a woman who isn't married and probably eats her own boogers. <laughs> you can see that you've attacked the person rather than respond to the argument. Ambiguity here is um, using double meanings or an and ambiguities of language to mislead or misrepresent the, the truth. So. Imagine a, a man called into court to pay some uh, parking fines, and uh, the judge says, you know, why do you pay me? He says, well, there was a sign there that says fine for parking. I assumed it'd be fine to park there. <laughs> so that word fine is used in two senses, and it's just, it's not valid logic, right? Um, anecdotal, this is something we talk about a lot. Anecdotal is uh, is using one case or one instance as the overall rule, um, using personal experience or an isolated example as a valid argument. Um, Jason said that was all cool and everything, but his grandfather smoked like 30 cigarettes a day and lived until 97. So he's trying to say that, um, that hey, it's okay to smoke because my grandfather smoked a pack a day and he live till 97. Well, that's just one instance, right? Um, saying that uh, appeal to authority. So appeal to authority is, is this idea that since a th a, an authority says something, then it must be true. But that's not necessarily the, the case, is it? Um, unable to defend his argument that earth is flat, Bob said that his friend Terry, who was qual a qualified botanist, who also believed the earth to be flat and had even seen it from up a tree. <laughs> okay, so basically he's saying that, hey man, of course the earth is flat. My friend's a botanist and he says that the earth is flat. He's seen it from the top of a tree. Kind of a silly argument. Kind of a silly example. Um, but basically just appealing to say, hey, Brad Pitt says it's true. Well, <laughs> okay. Doesn't really mean much. Appeal to emotion. Uh, manipulating an emotional response in place of a valid or compelling argument. Um, Luke didn't want to eat his sheep brains with chopped liver and Brussels sprouts, but his father asked him to think about all the poor, starving children in third world countries who weren't fortunate enough to eat. Well, I mean, it's not very, it's not a very, uh, it's not a very applicable argument to say that, hey, look, there's other people who can't eat, so you should. It's an appeal, it's making you feel emotional about the aspect and, and uh, making you want to maybe please the person rather than a valid argument. Appeal to nature, appealing to the, uh, making the argument that because something is natural, it is therefore valid and, and inevitably good. Okay, so I think of uh, this as the, uh, some, some of those, uh, some of those uh, natural remedies that people will, will tout, you know, um, essential oils was one. Essential oils, man, people, people were like, eat, drink this stuff. It's supposed to be great because it's all natural and this is a natural remedy. Well. Just because it's natural does not mean that it is good or true, right? Appeal to nature. Well, this is the way it is in nature. It doesn't really matter. Uh, bandwagon is, in effect, saying that everyone's doing it. So should you, or why shouldn't I? Um, everyone else is cheating, so why shouldn't I? It's the, major the majority is not always right. In fact, I often say, if a majority of people believe something, you probably run the other way screaming. <laughs> this is tyranny of the majority it can become. Okay, begging the question is the circular argument in which the uh, conclusion is, is included already in the premise. The assertion restates the point just made. So it's something like uh, green is the best color because it is the greenest of all colors. Or the, uh, the teachings of Jesus are true because it says so in the Bible. See that circular argument? Uh, black or white, also known as either or or false dilemma, um, fallacy is when two alternative states are presented as the only two possibilities. Uh, Patrick Henry says, give me liberty or give me death. Well, there were, there's something in between there. I, I consider this a, a, a question of either freedom or slavery. 
he said, well, maybe we could just become still, be, you know, stay British citizens is another option. Um, this is another example. Stacy spoke out against capitalism. Therefore, she must be a communist. <laughs> Black or white. This has got to be your it's like America. You either love it or leave it, right? And the burden of proof. Saying that the burden of proof lies not on the person making the claim, but with someone else to disprove. So my example here is that Joe declares that a teapot is at this very moment in orbit around the sun. And because you can't disprove that, well, it must be right. It's not, is it? At cherry picking, this is presenting only evidence that supports your claim or your presupposed truth, your, your presupposed idea. Um, the makers of sugarette candy drinks point to research showing that out of five countries where sugarette drinks sell the most units, three of them are in the top 10 healthiest countries on earth. Therefore, sugarette drinks must be healthy. Well, that's just one bit of evidence and it's a non sequitur also. Um, cherry picking is very insidious, often used in intelligence. You can, you can, you can uh, cherry pick the intelligence to prove only what you want it to prove, and uh, the rest is hidden from the public. Therefore, governments can go to war based on invalid assumptions. Um, composition and division, assuming that what's true about one part of something has to, has to be applied to all the other parts of it. An example is, Daniel was a precocious child and had a liking for logic. He reasoned that atoms are invisible and that he's made of atoms. Therefore, he must be invisible too. Turns out he was terrible at hide-and-go-seek. <laughs> That's not true. Yes, atoms are invisible to us, but we're, we're made of atoms, but that doesn't make us invisible also. This is composition and division. Fallacy. Equivocation. Division. Equivocation. This is an assertion that falsely relies on the use of one term in two different states. Your party platform is right about the economy. As far right as it can get, the word right is being implied there for um, both, both correctness and towards the Republican, towards the conservative side of politics. So that's, it's, a, it's a fallacy because it's the, the word is not used in appropriate senses. Okay. Um, fallacy, fallacy. This is presuming that because someone has made a fallacy, what they say has to be false. Uh, recognizing that Amanda has committed a fallacy and arguing that she should, that we should eat should eat healthy food because a nutritionist said is pos is popular. Elise said that we shouldn't that we should therefore eat double bacon cheeseburgers every day. So if you commit a fallacy in a argument. It doesn't necessarily mean that every part of the argument is false, and that you can't, and that you should assume the opposite argument. This, in this case, she makes a fallacy saying we should eat healthy food, and the opponent says, "Well, you made a fallacy during that, so we should probably eat double bacon cheeseburgers every single day." Faulty logic. False analogy. False analogy is an assumption that because two things are alike in some ways, they must be alike in, in all or other ways. Since the books are about the same length and the cover and cover the same material, one is probably as good as the other. This is a false analogy. Compare something that seems like the situation you're describing, and you use that to describe it in all senses erroneously. False authority. This is the assumption that an expert in one field can be credible and expert in another. Um, the d defense budget must be cut as the country's leading pet, uh, pediatrician says. <laughs> so this means uh, pediatric medicine is unrelated to uh, economics or consular or political science. You may be the best pediatrician in your town, but it doesn't make your uh, opinion or your, your argument more valid. False authority. False cause is the assumption that because one thing follows another, the first should be the cause of the second. This is sometimes called post hoc. So it means because of this, that. Uh, people, people confuse correlation of things with causation. So pointing to a fancy chart, Roger shows how temperatures have been rising 
over the past few centuries, while at the same time the numbers of pirates have been decreasing. Thus, pirates cool the world, and global warming is a hoax. <laughs> it's silly. False cause. It's one you'll see a lot. False cause. Someone will say, because of this, this happened, and you have to really analyze it, because many times not. False dilemma, stating that there are only two alternatives that exist. In fact, there are, so this is, this is kind of like either or, black and white fallacy. Um, false dilemma says, we only have two choices, to build new, nu new, more nuclear power plants or to be completely dependent on foreign oil. Well, no, there's, there's other, there's more things in between those two. Uh, this is a genetic fallacy. Judging something good or bad on the basis of where it comes from or, or from whom it comes. Okay. Accu accused on the 6 o'clock news of corruption and taking bribes, the senator said that we should be all be very, we should all be very, very wary of things we hear in the media because we all know how unreliable the media can be. Guilt by association. This is one that your parents may have used against you. Like if you're friends are doing something, then you're probably guilty of it too. It's an unfair attempt to make someone responsible for the beliefs or actions of others. Yep. Okay. Um, Senator Barlow must be dishonest because she belongs to the same club as that judge who was recently disbarred. And a hasty generalization is a generalization based on too little evidence or uh, exceptionally biased evidence. Teenagers are reckless drivers. Well, some teenagers are Good drivers. A loaded question, one of my favorites. This is asking a question that has the assumption built into it so that it can't be answered without appearing, without assuming guilt. Uh, so have you finally stopped cheating on exams? So, uh, so uh, Billy, when are you going to stop cheating on your wife? So see how the, the premise is built into the question itself? Middle ground. This is by saying that, that between two Two arguments must be the truth. The middle way must always be the truth. Saying that a compromise or middle point between two extremes must be truth. Well, sometimes it can be, but it does, it's not always the fact. Holly said that vaccinations cause ultra, aut, autism in children, but her scientifically well-read friend Caleb said that this claim had been debunked and proven false. Their other friend, Alice, offered a compromise that Vaccinations cause some autism. It's that middle way, but it's not always true, is it? No true Scotsman, one of my favorites. This is an appeal to purity as a way to dismiss relevant, relevant criticisms or claims. Uh, Bill, a UT Austin student, argues that UT has a poor cricket program because their cricket team has gone 0 from 12 for the last three seasons. His opponent shouts in anger, You're no true Longhorn! <laughs> It doesn't, he's, he's appealing to the purity of the person. You're no Longhorn. I don't know why I like that so much. Okay, non sequitur, a statement that, that does not follow logically from what has just been said. A conclusion that does not follow from the premises. An example, Billy Joe is honest, therefore he will get the job done. Well, just because you're honest doesn't mean you're, it means, says nothing to the degree of your, your uh, work ethic. Oversimplification is a statement or argument that leaves out relevant considerations about an issue. People that pass tests are lucky. Well, there's a lot more to it than that. Um, personal incredulity, saying that because one finds something difficult to understand, it's therefore not true. Kirk drew a picture of a fish and a human, and with disdain asked Richard if he really thought we were stupid enough to believe that a fish could somehow turn into a human. So he's trying to disprove evolution with this, uh, with this uh, uh, attack on your intelligence. Do you really think that this fish could turn into this human? It's attacking your intelligence. Um, red herring, dodging the real issue by drawing attention to an ir irrelevant issue. Um, why worry about terrorists when we ought to be worrying about acid rain? Well, acid rain has nothing to do with the argument at hand, right? Red herring is just, it's just a misdirection tactic. Just bring up something that is not appropriate to the ar argument. Something, it's usually an emotional issue. Bring up something else. Slippery slope is a, assuming that we, if we l allow one thing to happen, uh, 
a whole host of other terrible calamities will follow. It's like Pandora's box. Oh, if you do that, then all this is going to happen. This is the chicken little fallacy. Jose asserts that if we allow children to play video games, then the next thing you know, we'll be living in a post-apocalyptic zombie wasteland. Maybe not so much. Uh, the one that I use is uh, if you allow, allow same-sex marriage, then all of a sudden people are going to be marrying their dogs and their toasters, and, their, and then they're going to be having toasters marry dogs and dogs marry cats, and everybody will be marrying each other. Not the case. Special pleading, moving the goalposts or making up exceptions when a claim is shown to be false. So this is the way not to be seen to be false. Edward Johns claims to be psychic, but when his abilities are tested under proper scientific conditions, they magically disappear. Edward claims this, he, claim, he explained by saying that if one has to have faith, so, oh my, you think that I wasn't magic? Well, you just have to have faith. Uh, straw, man po- straw man fallacy is a big straw man fallacy is a big one misrepresenting someone's argument to make it easier to attack after Will said that we should be nice to kittens because they're fluffy and cute Bill says that Will is a cat supremacist who wants to be mean to, to poor defenseless puppies <laughs> just misre- change the argument to make it easy to attack yep. uh, and this one Avoiding having to engage with criticism by turning it back on the accuser. Answering criticism with criticism. Tukwawi means N-U. Um, Nicole identified that Hannah had committed a logical fallacy, but instead of addressing the substance of her claim, Hannah accused Nicole of committing a fallacy earlier in the conversation. So it's sort of like, so it's like hey, 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 you committed a fallacy just then. Oh, yeah? Well, you committed a fallacy earlier. <laughs> All right, those are logical fallacies. They can be very, they're not logical and they're not valid arguments, but they can be very persuasive when used properly.